Hello, my name is Kara Lane, and I'm a research scientist with Learning and Scholarly Technologies. And I'm here today with my colleague, Henry Lyle, to talk about our 2008 faculty, teaching assistant, and student surveys on learning and scholarly technologies. In particular, we're going to focus today on our analysis of the different technology support needs of beginner and expert users that we found in our analysis of our data. Um, before we go f any further, I want to tell you a little bit about the University of Washington. We are, as you know, a large public research one institution. We have three campuses, Seattle and then two branch, smaller branch campuses. And so you can see from the numbers on this slide, the majority of our students, 42,000, are associated with the Seattle campus. And the data I'll be talking about today is also connected to the Seattle campus specifically, since the branch campuses have different technological infrastructure and have different needs. Um, I represent Learning and Scholarly Technologies, and we're a central IT support unit that focuses on academic technologies, in particular online learning tools and student computing labs. We also offer a variety of knowledge services related to technology, in, including the surveys that I'm going to talk about today. A little background on the surveys. Um, the main goal of these surveys is to understand the current technology use of our clients, as well as to understand um, they're be able to identify their ongoing needs. We use the information from this survey to make decisions on where to devote time and resources. And this is a survey we've conducted every three years, and it's the third iteration of this survey. Um, an important note is that the surveys are intentionally not longitudinal. Instead, we really focus on the current issues that we're facing at each time that we design the survey, so not all items carry over from year to year. Um, a little bit about our project partners. This is not something that we do on a, alone. It's really a large effort with a variety of campus support units as well as faculty groups. Um, for today's presentation, I'm really going to focus on just a few of the research questions we explored. And spe specifically, we were looking to understand what obstacles prevent faculty, TAs, or students from adopting technology, as well as what types of supports people find the most useful. Um, and we're going to look at this data based on technological expertise. Other sections of the survey that we don't talk about today include a section on teaching and learning contexts, where we looked at technology used within different contexts, as well as how technology was used to meet different goals. We also had questions about opinions for, about technology, priorities for the future, and for the faculty, a section on research technologies. Um, the specific focus of today's presentation and the argument we present in our paper really focuses on the needs of expert, intermediate, and beginner users. And as someone who's worked in technology for a long time, one thing I found is that the needs of pioneering adopters, those faculty who are really willing to try new things, often really shape technological discussions on campus and at IT conferences such as EdMedia. So it's very easy for those needs to become the most prevalent, um, the ones most focused on, the ones people strive to meet. Um, a lot of research that looks at obstacles and supports that faculty, TAs, and students face also doesn't tend to look at the expertise differences amongst those populations. So if you take those two patterns together, what we're presenting today looks very closely at the different needs of expert, intermediate, and advanced users in order to present some idea of their unique obstacles and unique needs for these different populations and some strategies for addressing them. And now I'm going to turn it over to Henry Lyle, who will talk about our methods. This research involved three phases. We started with focus groups. We followed the focus groups with pilot surveys. Then we commenced this study with our principal uh, survey instruments. So we started with focus groups in the autumn of 2007. Uh, we conducted fo uh, separate focus groups for each group, for TAs, students, and faculty. Each focus group was composed of three to five participants. Following the focus group, we conducted a pilot survey. And the purpose of the pilot survey was to pretest the instrument uh, for item clarity, among other things. The principal online survey was an online survey. And we sent a recruitment email to prospective participants asking them to participate in this study. This took place in the spring of 2008. We had a large number of participants, as you can see here. Uh, 547 faculty, 233 TAs, and 656 students took the survey. 
and as you can see we had a fair response rate as well. We had participants self-rate their technological expertise on a five-point scale. As you can see here, we define three points on the scale by providing a series of skill sets. Participants were classified as beginners if they selected one or two on the scale. They're classified uh, as intermediate if they selected three and they were classified as expert users if they selected four or five on the five-point scale.